says, you are my hero, so you are our hero. And we love you, we appreciate you, and we look forward to how God is going to bless you and the successes that you're going to have, not being with the city anymore, but you're still a part of us. And so we just want to thank you. And uh, uh, I'm going to give uh, some other people an opportunity to say words of encouragement and a welcome, and just to know that we do love you and we appreciate you. And uh, we look forward to your many endeavors that you're going to be doing. Well. I'm Cheryl Williams, and um, Adam, I started working with you when you were community prosecutor. So I've seen you progress. And what I'm really excited about is where you're headed. Yeah. And the knowledge that you've gotten while you've been in the city, you're going to use now as one of the leaders in the city, which is so, so, so much needed. So I'm really excited. I'm, I'm praying for you and wish you the very best. And uh, I think, you're, you know, I know you're going to be successful. Just make sure you keep God first in your campaign. And with that, everything else is going to fall in place. That's it. Good afternoon. I'm Opal White. And Adam used to be my boss. Mm-hmm. He gave me the opportunity to come and work for him under his leadership. And I want you to know how much I appreciate you for believing in me and giving me the opportunity to come over to your team. I missed you when you left us and went to the mayor. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna miss you even more. But like we said, you're not going anywhere. Oh, no. You're still gonna be with us and we're still gonna be with you. So I support you 100%. I'm a phone call away 24 seven if you need me, okay? So I love you and I'm here for you. Adam, how you doing? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Aries Pierce, and I want to thank Adam for uh, his leadership, first of all. He allowed me to come over to the Community Prosecution Division some six years ago. He was uh, then second in charge of this program, and I have seen the careful steps that he has taken since I've been in this, with this program and from chief to the mayor, and now you're moving forward. Your careful steps, I hope, will bless you, and I hope that you are successful in all the things that you choose to do in your life. And I'm gonna tell you, I love you, and I appreciate you, and I wanna thank you for trusting in me, giving me an opportunity to come over here today. Just to show you how God is already in the mix of this for you, I was somewhere last night, and I told Miss Edna a few, um, a few uh, parts of the story. I was somewhere last night, and this guy asked to come by, and I did, and the little girl is a dancer. I happened to be in there, and my godmother said, that's what you need to talk to, that's a dance mom over that 16 year veteran. So I went in with my dance mom mindset. I mean, I was scared the child to death. She probably wants to quit the drill team now, but like I told her, you know, the thing that she needs to do for her is a dancer. So I asked the lady, her mom, I said, where do you guys stay? She said, we stay in Lake Howard. Oh, and this was even before I knew. All I knew that we were doing something for you today. I hadn't heard that you were running until earlier this morning. So, well, you know, he's running. I'm like, oh, let me get on by there for sure. You know, so, and like I told Miss Pete, that just goes to show for God is in the mix because any, any time I would have been at home, because I watch a show every night at 9 o'clock. I have somebody watch on TV every night when I'm on my laptop and while I'm working. But just so happened, God made me by there last night to, to get this lady's phone number who actually stays in your district. That's why I say it's always a ram in the bush somewhere. You know, when we met over here that day, when Miss Edna had the big road south, there was like 500 people in here, you know, invitation only deal we had when the mayor kind of announced the road south thing for Camp Wisdom. And I asked you, and I told you about my little neighborhood, I needed someone from the mayor's office to come out. Of course, the mayor didn't come, but Adam showed up at my community meeting. And it was a major big deal for my people in Joppa to have somebody from the mayor's office in my neighborhood. And you came. You know, you came. You talk to people, you know, you introduce yourself. <coughs> and just from my community, that speaks volumes to people like us in, in my community. And I want to tell you thank you for just taking the time that day for coming by, for listening to me when we were here and all in the midst of things that were going on. You know, it was a really big day for Miss Edna and for Camp Wisdom Now and all that. You took time to take me to the side to speak to me. Yeah. And that's the kind of heart that a council person, that's the kind of heart that a community leader, a community leader needs, someone that would take time 
to listen to everyone, not just because I'm going to give you a check, or not because I'm, I'm going to stop going to vote for you, or not you because you it. actually live in my community, mm -hmm. or you my church member, or you whatever, but someone that you didn't really know me, I didn't really know you. And then when I heard who you were, I was like, well, okay, let me see if I can at least get close to him. But just know, if you don't see my presence, you wouldn't be here with me by phone, running two other candidates. But if you don't see me, just know that my prayer, my petition of prayer, would be for you to be successful on that day. And just know that there, you know, there are more people probably for you than all against you. And we've had that talk, we've had that talk sitting right there in those two chairs a while ago. But just let me know what I can do for you, and it will be done. Because Adam, again, I thank you on behalf of the community of Joplin. Thank you. We love you. And like I told you in your book, we're wishing you the best because you deserve it all. All right. All right. Keep up the great work. And this one says, seek peace and pursue it. All right. All right. Turn around. Let me get my pitch. Now turn this 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 Turn Oh. All right. <laughs> There's a soccer tournament today, yes. Oh, okay. But then they were still got home so they could get here, and my two-year-old filled in the plug in the in the sink and turned the water on. And when they walked off, she walked out, and the whole laundry room was flooded. So, so she's cleaning up water right now while we're here celebrating. But thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, we love you. God sends blessings on angels' wings. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can me. I'm like, okay. Do it again. God sends blessings on angels' wings. And it reads, happy. Happy is the heart that believes in angels. Truly we've seen, truly we know, especially today, that you are a believer. But just know, you believe in angels while we believe in you. And sight unseen, we're going to be your angels that will be out there in our own in, in our own way. Some of us invisible because we lay some men in to get on there. <laughs> but you know, you need to understand that there are going to be angels unaware, angels that are going to be protecting you, that are going to be supporting you. And here we are in this room. So again, congratulations, and we're working for you. Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I have to wait till Whit tell me to move, and I'll move. You guys, first of all, I am Diane Gibson. I am a member of the Concord Missionary Baptist Church. Scott <laughs> Gibson's baby, Damaris Mall, and a candidate for District 8 City Council. All right. So I'm great. Oh, I'm going for it all. But uh, I wouldn't go if it had not been for my friend. It was something about meeting Adam Magoo that uh, Adam and I have been close. What it has been, nine years now? Ever since the day Roxanne Potts brought him in my office, there was something. And y'all know I don't do Adams. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I, I, don't, I don't gravitate to them fast. But it was something about this one that uh, it was just, it, it, and we have been, in all that time, and all y'all know that really know me, y'all would not believe Adam has only been mad with me one time in all that time. Wow. wow. And it, it was you don't too really know you. <laughs> 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 and I have to tell you this quick brief story about Adam. But um, not only does he have a heart and he, and he loves the Lord, but he has a heart for people. And I yeah. keep trying to tell him, but you got to toughen up. You, you, you got to still love people, but you still got to know when it's time to, to stand still and when it's time to actually be able to be a fighter and when it's time to roll up your sleeves and do that. Now, Adam know how to love. He's very compassionate. Adam is not a fighter, not a fighter in the sense that, you know, an Edna Pemberton type of fighter, a Claudia type of uh, uh, Queen Joppy type of fighting, Oprah type of fighting, and sure enough, not Diane type of fighting. <laughs> but uh, this prosecutor had just, a colleague had just, had just pushed me to the limit that day. She had just pushed me. And I finally said to her, she was challenging my record. Now, you just don't do that. And I just fired back. I told her, baby, I put my record up against yours any day, any day. In one week, I've done more than you've done in two years. Adam called me, he said, Diane, with all the love for Jesus that I know you got in you. <laughs> he said, please stop here, please stop. But my whole attitude was like, you don't get it. I mean, this girl is pushing me to the limit here. 
But that was the first time I saw my friend finally, I think I pushed off a little too far. And I was actually working for him at the time. But I, I admire the fact that Adam is the kind of person that listens. Adam is the kind of person that gives you his undivided attention. Adam will be that counsel person that will sit there and listen, not the one in the, that when people come to speak at the podium, that's the time they want to walk. That's the time they want to whisper to their colleagues. Adam gives you his undivided attention. And Adam goes deep to him, whether it's in his pocket. And I promise you, his <coughs> wife and his kids come with him. They are a package deal. Yeah. He is not by himself at no time. He can sit here now. I promise you, Team Adam Magoo is somewhere close. Mm -hmm. And they will be there. And I, I just love him. I call his kids my kids. And I'm like, Pastor Bailey, y'all figure that out. <laughs> but uh, Adam, I know you will do well. My devotion was in 2 Kings today, and it says, use what you have. And what is, what is God saying? Sometimes we look for an army. Sometimes we look for a multitude. And we don't have to always have it. God said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And if he can use one, he can use two. If you go back to the widow, that's what my devotion was on. And she was saying that, look, you know, my kids out there working, trying to pay off my husband's debt. And Elijah told him, you know, what do you have? She said, all I have is some oil. That was all she needed. Why? Because we serve a God that we don't know how this race is going to go. I've never talked to her. <laughs> we don't know how this race is going to go. But we do know who's going to get the glory during the race, all through the race, and at the very end. We want people to see us in him, him in us. And that's what it is. We've joined Christians in public service, not because it was just a group, but because we want to know the only time we can make a difference, we got to get in the race. There's some that can do it on the outside and some that can do it. Reverend Jackson talk about the shakers. You know Edna Pemberton's one of those shakers. She's the one that goes up in the tree and just shaking and get it going. And then it has to be those at the bottom that make the jam. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a difference. We're going to let people know that there can be a made a difference. And it's not the North against the South no. anymore, the yeah. East against the West yeah. anymore. It's all of us working together to make the city of Dallas a better city. And we're going to do that. And it doesn't matter whether it's behind the horseshoe or in bed, front of the bed, horseshoe. Bed. We're going to do just what God had us to do. And we're going to tell them, you might want to look again because we're going to be just like David. It might be look like you just fight me. Mm -hmm. But baby, you better look behind me. You better look on the side of me. You better look in front of me because God got me protected yeah. from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet oh, all God. around me. He got a whole saying just so you might think you fighting me. But he said vengeance is mine. And whatever is just, he will pay. Yeah. So you just need to know, Pastor Bailey used to always say, look, if you're not having any opposition from the enemy, if you might want to check and see if y'all are running in the same direction. <laughs> <laughs> so, baby, the mere fact is starting out like this. When he said what they meant for harm, yeah, I'll turn it out for good. If you weren't a serious candidate, they wouldn't be bothering you. That's right. That's right. If you didn't have them scared, they wouldn't be bothering you. That's right. All God is saying is, Adam, I'm trying to smooth out some rough edges yeah, you got. Yeah. I'm just allowing this to happen yeah. to get you where I want you to be. Yeah. Because this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Once you get behind that horseshoe, I'm going to need you to have on the whole arm. I need you to be ready and be geared up. That's all he's preparing you for. And we're just going to use each other to keep each other. Mm -hmm. And that's all we're going to do. And these folks that are sitting up in here now, they're going to be there to hear you when you have to cry when you have to stand up, and it's okay. It's okay, Edna Pemberton can tell you how hard it is and how rough it gets. Now Edna's a show enough fighter. You know, I try to fight discreetly. You know, I try to, Edna will fight and get regardless, you know. So, you know, so we, we just have to have those people that's gonna be that wind beneath our wings. We have to have those people that I can go to Helen and truly be myself. I can say, Helen, I'm still gonna run, but it's rough, girl. You know, and I want to be able to call, and I can call Edna anytime and say, Edna, you know, it, it's hard. And it is. When you're trying to help others, it ain't easy. It's really not. But we just have to say, God, I know you didn't bring me this far. Yeah. And so I know I just, I'm just going to have to hold on to you. Yeah. And sometimes I don't let go, and you're just going to have to hold me. <laughs> and it's that. But I always, and as I told our Syrian committee this morning, you don't do anything that pulls you away from God. Yeah. Nothing. If you're doing too much that you're not spending that time with him, that's not him. Always remember him in the morning because you're going to need him. 
but I want you to know you got my support. Yeah. And I know I can say you got Edna's support, you got everybody else sitting up in here support, and whatever we can do within our power, we're gonna do that. And those people that's in that area, we're gonna encourage them to vote for you. And that's because you've shown yourself. And you are part of this community. You have good name identification. And, 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 and let me just say this in closing. You do understand most of us that are parents or grandparents, we understand what it is a priority to make sure your kids get a good education. Mm -hmm. We understand that. Ain't nobody mad with you. We understand that. Because again, if we can make sure that your kids get a strong and firm foundation and get an education, we've accomplished one of our goals anyway. Mm -hmm. And just because you want to be for public, want to run for public office, it shouldn't be <coughs> at the sake of your kids' education. So leave that alone. Don't even address it anymore. Let them, if that's all they got against you, you're doing pretty doggone good, yeah. brother. Amen. You are doing real good. Mm -hmm. Stay focused. <laughs> Keep your eye on God. Stay focused on the issues because people are hurting out here. Amen. And all they want to know is who can help. Amen. That's what they want to know. They don't care nothing about your kids, your wife. They want to know what you're going to do for us when you get in office. Right. What is your plan? And your plan is, is that I love the Lord and I'm here to serve the people. I love you, my brother. Amen. <laughs> okay, now this is the I didn't know him from Joplin. Came up and he was talking about the bus route. Okay. And he was saying that uh, I remember you all. I said, How do you remember me? Because I get nervous because they remember you. <laughs> because uh I'm not all those great people <laughs> sometimes. Diane can tell you, I was gonna grab somebody in the elevator at the Crescent Hotel. No, 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 no. He Cause he had lied on me. Oh, yeah, that's and, right. and I was all right until I saw him. And me and Diane was going up, we was all dressed up and everything, and I looked at him, and I grabbed hold of him, it's at the Crescent, going up. And, 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 and so I thank God for uh, friends. But the man said uh, about the, uh, uh, the bus route. He said, y'all, but what kind of job do that? I said, with some crazy folks like Mr. Gibson, we talked about that, but you know, anyhow, the bus time bus is there. But we here to say uh, thank you, and uh, I'm going to bring up Adam up, and then we got some folks and some gifts we want to surround them. We got this cake, this person made up, a homemade cake, y'all. And so then we got some more food over here, but I just want y'all to love him. I want to give him his flowers so I can smell him. To say that I love you, Adam, and uh, you know, I really, really do. And somebody called me, who's gonna come? I said, well, I know I'm gonna be there because it's my place. And I planned that. Now, Diane said, she's gonna be on no show with me. I said, now, whoever else can come, I said, but this is about me loving Adam. Mm -hmm. And so we, get, we, got, we can't be ashamed of our love. Me and Carter talked about that. We got, me, me and Carter have some fights now. Carter, at Carter High School, Carter came up with a hat on here and told me what she thought I was. I said, okay. And now you can't beat me loving Carter. But sometimes we gotta get it all out. We gotta be different and don't be ashamed about difference. Mm -hmm. And celebrate it when we agree on some agree, but we don't, leave it alone. And so um, I'm gonna bring uh, Mr. Adam up. And uh, before I do that, I'm gonna um, have, uh, yeah, Adam, come on up. Because we gotta yeah. be close to It's too much, right? <laughs> Making the decision to run was a tough decision. Mm -hmm. um, and the hardest part about it was all the stuff that we got going on, mm -hmm. all the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I finally got to the point where I know it's, it's not over, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're just really getting started. We got a lot more work to do. Um, you know, I, I, I start thinking about the decision to run, and I came up really with three words that were kind of guiding me. And it was faith, duty, and family. And a lot of what y'all have already talked about today is, is right in line with that. But uh, this is this is God's decision. Right. And no matter how hard it gets, it's it is what it is. It's already been made, it's already been done, and we're gonna follow it through no matter what. And then duty, you know, you start looking at you know, going back to early community prosecution, early community court judge. Um, some this is all building up to something, right? I mean, the relationships, the time, the work, the experience, and you just line it up and you know where that next step is. And so I'm putting it out there 
we're gonna have fun with this. Yeah. Um, and then family, my kids, it's already part of this whole process and we're gonna hit the streets. And every single time we talk to somebody else through this process, they're learning. And they're learning what community needs, they're learning what we need, and they're learning how mom and dad work together to do whatever we need to get done. And so, um, absolutely love today. So thankful for Miss Pemberton. From the moment we get started working in Grove South, I came and sat right over down there with her. And you know, it's, you don't have to be welcomed by everybody, but when you feel the welcome yeah. that she brings, yeah. and it doesn't matter who you are, when you are, what it is, but the welcomeness, the encouragement, and it might just be the emails every once in a while that, that support what we're doing, that, that raise the level of awareness for Grove South. And I just wish more of the areas that we're focusing on in Southern Dallas could have the leadership that Edna Pemberton has. In fact, as I was driving here today, I'm thinking, I wonder if Edna can come help me up in District 10. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, I'll be there invisible. I'm <laughs> sure you won't be an Edna over there. <laughs> so anyway, I, it's, I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate just coming out today, putting this together. You know, you don't always feel the appreciation, but certainly with, with everybody that's here today and the kind words and everything, I'm extremely humbled, very thankful, and um, I am, I'm with you. So it's going to be next step. Stay right there. Yes, ma'am.